exciting news about the graduation. Uh, <laughs> really psyched about that myself. <laughs> okay, I got an iPad here because I'm very hip, uh, just to make sure you're aware of that. Uh, <laughs> the resurrection. Has anything so little understood ever been so celebrated? Mm. Mm. I don't say this to accuse ourselves of not having read up enough on the resurrection. We probably have. We do okay. But there's just so little in our experience, in our reality, that could possibly match it. Things tend to end for us, not to be a doubter. <laughs> our very lives, of course, in the broader sense, but also small things. We end one job and then we move to another, right? Sometimes relationships end, we get another one. Sometimes we immoderately binge Netflix series and it's over and you can't go through that again. I don't know what we're into here, Fuller House or something. I like Fuller House, it's not that bad. Okay. So when those things are gone, they're gone. And so it's hard for us to imagine this concept, especially in reference to things that we love and treasure so much and people we love and treasure so much to think of them coming back. So in this and in other ways, the resurrection is very much removed from us in our experience. Now to get our heads and our hearts around the resurrection, we look to scripture. And I'm not talking about exegesis, I'm not talking about eisegesis, I'm talking about the risen Jesus. <laughs> I'll accept high fives. <laughs> now, as I've struggled over the years to figure out, okay, what does this resurrection mean? How do I picture it? What's it about? I tend to return to this encounter between Jesus and his disciples by the shores of the Sea of Tiberias. The disciples seem to have pretty much returned to their normal lives. Amazingly, I don't, you know, <laughs> I've seen the risen Jesus, but they're back to fishing. <laughs> things aren't going that well until Jesus shows up, and then they start catching some things. And then you have this situation where it's the beloved disciple first. He opens his eyes. He's the first to open his eyes and see that Jesus, it is the risen Lord on the shore. And so Peter's like, all right, then he jumps in the shore, and jumps into the water and goes after Jesus to go meet him and greet him. But it's that next part that I'd like to draw attention to because it is so simple, it is so human, and it is so extraordinary. The risen Jesus invites his disciples to breakfast. And so that's what they have, breakfast. Was it quiet? Was it a little awkward? Or was it more or less like home, like all those other dozens of nights sitting around a fireplace, sharing a meal. <coughs> it's hard to know. What do we know? We know that it was breakfast with Jesus. <laughs> and I'm thankful it happened. Why? Because I have a very hard time picturing the kingdom of God in its fully arrived sort of form. And I need a little help. When the Lord raises us up, are we walking around in like a celestial cloud with sunbeams just pouring in all over the place? Are there harps? I feel like we've been promised harps. <laughs> <laughs> are there endless seasons of Matlock? And not just nine. <laughs> I'm mess. I'm mess. All of this sounds wonderful. It does. It sounds wonderful. But at the end of this life, which for many involves so much trial and pain and suffering, I would trade it all to be at table with the people and the risen Lord I love. Yes. It's an image I can get out of bed in the morning for. So yes, the resurrection can feel removed out here until we appreciate its simplicity. The resurrection is as real as the smell of a hot fire and the sound of its crackling. The resurrection is as real as the taste and texture of bread and fish in our mouths. 
And like the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, the resurrection is as real as we, you and I, brothers and sisters, gather here, drinking our drinks, sharing the table, preaching the Lord whom we all love. Maybe today we fear, in vain, I guess, that these things will someday come to an end that we enjoy. Resurrection means we don't have to. So let's open our eyes now. The risen Lord is not imagined, but real. Not distant, but near. Not here for a moment, but for eternity. <laughs>